exciting. WBCM was like no other station that came before it, and there will likely never be anything like it again. Bill Lichtenstein, a writer and director, recognized this when he released his documentary, WBCN and the American Revolution. Now he has written a book, a sort of companion piece to the documentary. In it, after reading countless stories and pouring through hundreds of photos, you soon discover BCM was a pirate radio station with a strong signal. Inevitably, when you make a documentary, but we decided rather than just leave them on the cutting room floor that we would do a book. And so uh, MIT Press published it. It's got about three, four hundred photos and graphics, and it's won three awards. And it just, it really tells the story of the late 60s and early 70s through the prism of, of this uh, radical underground radio station. A school project to find a volunteer job turned out to be Bill Lichtenstein's introduction to a station that would change his life. I was actually um, in the ninth grade in Newton, Massachusetts, in an open classroom program. And one day a week, we had to go get volunteer jobs somewhere. And BCN had just come on the air not long before that. And I just, everybody loved the station. I called and said, you know, do you need help? And they were just starting a listener line with volunteers answering the, the deluge of phone calls they had. So that's, that's how I started there. Even as a teenager, Lichtenstein could tell something special was happening at the station. Whether broadcasting atop the Peru or at its final resting place on Boylston Street in the shadows of Fenway Park, it was the place to be. Everything in those days seemed like it was moving very quickly. It was special in the sense that if there was anything going on in Boston, uh, you know, if, if uh, a, a big band was in town or somebody was, uh, you know, speaking who was important, they would all cross paths with the station. Adding the name American Revolution to the book and documentary was an easy decision. Early on, BCN itself told the world it was heading up the revolution. If you were listening on the air, announcers would say, you're listening to WBCN, the American Revolution. And I think it was to serve notice that this was really, um, you know, part of what was then kind of the vanguard of dissent and, um, you know, really trying to uh, change a lot of what America had been in the 50s and early 60s. So um, we kept that in, in the theme, the American Revolution sort of, woven into the film in a number of different ways in the book as well. And now it's time for our revolutionary new experiment in radio. This is WBCN in Boston. It's unmistakably the place, you know, to be and sort of the center of all of the action in those days in Boston. In the early days, the power and influence BCN had on the counterculture was backed with power, as in Wattage. It was extremely a radical underground station, but it wasn't in the basement of some church. Right. It sat atop the Prudential building, right. and it was 50,000 watts, which meant when they said something on the air, people in five states could hear it, and, and that was a tremendous uh, power that that station had. If you buy the book, you have to own the movie too, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot they, of they different... They go hand in hand. Well, hopefully, I think if people either watch the movie, they're going to want to get the book, or if, if, you, uh, if you have the book, then... Uh, You'll want to see the movie. The movie is great because it just is filled with all of the music from that era. This is Greg Walsh signing off at BCAT News.